Let's continue our discussion from last time, where we looked at anomaly detection with k-nearest neighbors by building off of that and asking ourselves the question, what is the local outlier factor? We have talked about a few different approaches to anomaly detection so far. We've talked about the probabilistic and statistical approaches like Benford's Law, Z-scores, Mahalanobis distances, which you can click on the link above for. But last time we were transitioning to more of the machine learning based techniques to anomaly detection with k-nearest neighbors, called KNN. Let's continue to work down that list and look at the local outlier factor. To understand the local outlier factor though, we need to understand k-nearest neighbors. Luckily that is exactly what the last video in the series is about. It's kind of like these were put in this order for a reason. Yup, marketing. So please click on the link in the upper right hand corner to see what k-nearest neighbors are. Remember. KNN just measures the average distance from a specific point to each of the k closest points, where close is defined traditionally by Euclidean distance. When looking at KNN, that is a great way to get global outliers. For example, looking at this plot, those bottom three points stick out like a sore thumb. They are outliers globally. However, as the name suggests, the local outlier factor tries to detect observations that might be considered outliers locally based only on the points around them, as compared to globally looking at all the points. So how does the local outlier factor work? Well, formally, the local outlier factor is a ratio that compares the average density of a specific observation to the average densities of that observation's k nearest neighbors. If the density of the original observation is greater than the k nearest neighbor points densities, then it is a local outlier. I know, I know, I know. I used a definition with a word you may not know. Density. Well, what is density? Density is the inverse of the reachability from an observation to all its k nearest neighbors. Wait, what is reachability? Didn't think this would be a grammar lesson, did you? Well, reachability is like it sounds. It's essentially how far we have to travel to get to the k nearest point. So less dense means we travel further, not as reachable. How about this? Let's think about it visually. Imagine we have this point of interest highlighted above. Now let's look at that point's five nearest neighbors. You can pick any number for k, but I'm going to go with five for this example. Now imagine a circle where the radius of the circle is the distance to the kth, or fifth in our example, nearest neighbor. The area of that circle will represent the density of that observation. Remember though, we have to compare that observation's density to the density of its nearest neighbors. Here are the same circles, but calculated for the nearest neighbors. Basically, for each of the outlined observations, the original five nearest neighbors, I took their density, which is a circle with a radius to each of their fifth nearest neighbors. Now we compare. We have the density on the left from our observation of interest. On the right, we have the densities from the five nearest neighbors. We need to average those densities on the right-hand side. Imagine a circle that is the average size of all those. Something like this. Now let's compare. See how the density of the original point is larger than the average density of its neighbors? It would have a ratio, or local outlier factor, above 1. Therefore, it is more likely to be a local outlier. Let's do it again with a different point. Same idea. Look at the highlighted point. I am taking the density of that point as the circle, with the radius being the distance to that point's fifth nearest neighbor. Again, now let's find the densities of those five nearest neighbors. Each of the densities of the highlighted points are circles, with a radius being the distance to their fifth nearest neighbor. Lots of neighborly love in this video. Again, let's compare to the original point's density to the densities of the original point's nearest neighbors. We still want to take an average density or circle on the right-hand side. We see again that the point of interest has a larger density than its neighbors, meaning it is further away from its neighbors than its neighbors are from their neighbors. Speaking of neighbors, I need to get my wheelbarrow back. Sorry, sidetracked. Let's do this one last time for fun with a point in the middle of the data cloud. Take the highlighted point, find its density. Look at this highlighted point's neighbor's densities. Compare. Original point density compared to the average of the neighbor's densities. Looks like the neighbors have larger densities. The original point is not a local outlier. Here is the same graph, but each point is highlighted based on the local outlier values. The more saturated points have higher ratios, while the less saturated and more transparent points have smaller ratios. We can see the points on the outside of the data cloud are highlighted as having a higher chance of being local outliers. Perfect. We have anomalies. So what is the local outlier factor? That is the local outlier factor in under five minutes.